Hello and welcome to the Week in Review at Grimsmo Knives. I'm John. Angelo. And let's jump right in. Yeah, let's jump in. Last week we talked about cases. Yep. Um, seems like you guys like what we're doing there with that. Yeah, um, those nano cases are beautiful. We've yeah. been making them for a long time. Haven't talked about them enough, so it's yep. good to start so talking more I'm about them. I'm excited to see that um, people want to play with the DIY aspect of that. And um, so yeah, we picked a red. We talked about that in the last uh, video. We picked a really cool dark blood yep. red, burgundy almost color. Um, Between those four paint chips that yeah. we got, um, it was brutal. <laughs> yeah. What do you picking you know, colors is so hard. Yeah, especially when they all look nice and you're like, well, this, you know, this would look good with that or this. Yeah, and yeah. kind of what it came down to is uh, playing with sunlight. We believe that these are cases to go outside. And one of these colors really stood out in the sunlight. Yeah. And so even though we had some other favorites, I think this will be beautiful. Beautiful. So, I can't wait to see it. It's yeah. like it's like dark and rich and it looks expensive. That's yes. what you want. It's right? Canadiana. So, yeah, exactly. um, so yeah, we're excited about that. Uh, the 3D files will be available when yeah. we sell the cases. Yeah, uh, we'll you, have... you guys seem to really like the uh, the tackle box kind of tray yeah. situation, which is awesome. So we're going to provide files on our website when we do start selling the cases. Yeah. You guys can print your own. Um, we talked about printing printing them ourselves. I don't know if I want to, but we'll see. Yeah, maybe a little bit. We'll see. Um, so yeah, that's been uh, exciting for us. We're really curious to see what you guys come up with. Also curious what colors you guys like. Yeah, because after the Canadiana series, we'll who knows what's next. So if you guys have preferences or you know, one person uh, Bob mentioned clear i don't know if that's feasible but yeah well I mean, nanook has talked to us about clear and it's brittle it's yeah it's, it's different weird, type right? of plastic yeah. so um but there is the ability to maybe blend some colors in the future or you know play with some stuff we'll see it's fun so um yeah uh rask development that's yeah been... so rasks are going extremely well i mean it's a project we've been developing for the past four years always tweaking always but yeah. it's it's like smooth and, and going really really well right now i mean the whole team is involved in the development and the tweaking and um and the day-to-day -day process yeah. and it's going really well customers are loving them everything yeah you've really dialed in that grinding it's i love it's it really impressive to see and it's something that we can utilize in our future product exactly and that's the thing everything we're doing on each product we currently make is building our skill for the future yeah. and i'm i'm trying to make sure that every process is like growable on other products so yeah. it's really fun exciting and rasks have been my um you know, my, my focus for the past four years, pretty yeah. much. Me personally, um, trying to get that so nice, and it is, and everybody loves it, and it's it's just wonderful. It's an incredible knife. Yep. Awesome. So we had some challenges this week, a couple. Yeah, so I, I had a good one. Just after everybody left, um, I was working on our Williman machine, and uh, and I crashed it. It does one operation, two operations, and then it just goes <laughs> right into the jaws, tool holder into the soft jaws, like, drill this deep into aluminum yeah. the, the holder itself and i'm like with an end mill with with the holder oh like a little tiny eight yeah. inch end mill disappeared yeah. and then the holder goes this deep into aluminum and i'm just like what no no you're not like it does two successful operations and the third one just plows so and what i'm happened? like what the heck so i'm racking my brain that kind of panic that a machinist has you know like yeah. like something's wrong well, i did something wrong or did the machine i don't know i don't know um and I'm like, that's a, not a new tool, everything's normal. And then I looked in the fusion side of things and on the Williman, because it has the B axis, um, you basically have to choose your orientation for every tool path. Yeah. Usually Z up, sometimes Z sideways, whatever. Yeah. So various operations, I'm going up sideways. This one happened to be Z down, which is wrong. I, yeah. I didn't catch it, I did it wrong. Um, it should have been Z up and I always catch this. I didn't catch it this time. So. Basically, if this is your bar, it's trying to go just above and then do a little engraving. It tried to do the engraving down, so it, it tried to go below the part. It fed in or wrap it in? Wrap it. Oh, okay. Because okay. the clearance planes are tiny, yeah. so it, it's just... So anyway, the machine was stuck and like holder welded to the yeah. thing. I couldn't lift it. I couldn't do I tried to unclamp the tool and lift the Z, but the machine doesn't let you do that. So I ended up unbolting the soft jaw and lifting it up with the tool holder. The soft jaw stuck to the tool, yeah. and then now it's like... Can I save either one of these? So you go through a recovery sequence when that happens? Yep, yep. You know, collect yourself, go for a walk, like, like take the panic yeah. away. Um, and then, well, how can I, what's the next step? How can I do I gotta untie this somehow. And the machine's under pressure too. It's like kind of, I call it twisted up. The machine's mm -hmm. like compressed. Yeah. So you have to release that tension somehow. Um, so I was able to unbolt it after trying a couple different things, lift it up, tool yeah. holder stuck. I was able to tap it off with the hammer. 
and then the tool holder is still fine. The collet is toast. Yeah. End mill's toast. The vice jaw is toast. Run out on the spindle. Um, but the spindle's still good. The yeah. machine moved a little bit. Um, so I have to realign. I'm still yeah. going through the realignment process. So you're process going through right a big now. recovery process to yeah, make sure everything's dialed. That was almost a week ago. <laughs> I'm gotcha. like, slowly, 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 just um, get a little bit at a time. Do we run it's off topic? Do we run complete on that? Not. I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Like complete does. The fusion simulation shows yeah. this crash. Okay. Meaning I didn't simulate gotcha. it. Gotcha. Is so. that just too much on the plate? Yeah, maybe, too much on running through okay. it. Uh, it was an easy thing. I'm just engraving soft shots. Easy, but yeah. man, I guess slow yeah. down a little bit, trying yeah. to get a lot accomplished. It's that exactly. smooth is fast. Sometimes you just want to be slow so you yeah. can be smooth. Yep. I mean, it's and a good lesson for us too. Exactly. You know. For you guys, for everybody watching, good yeah. le like learn from my mistakes. Um, verify, verify, verify. Yeah. So yeah, that was my big one. Okay, but we're recovering out of it. It'll be yeah, every, everything's fine. Just my pride is hurt. That's usually what gets hurt the most yeah, in, exactly. this, in this industry is your pride. <laughs> yep. Um, hopefully that's the most. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So um, I mean that's you know recoverable. We'll move forward. Yeah. yeah. Move on. That's fine. Sweet. So um, we got some new product updates. I know you've been working extremely hard on Buyer's Choice. It's a yeah. big deal. It's a big buyer's deal Buyer's Choice. Us. Basically, the the ability for the customer to choose what pattern, what color what steel finish choices, things like that, um, hardware color. And it's it's hard, it's hard guys. We've tried many different versions of this, tried a Google Sheets version, tried different programmers and outsourcers and people all over the world that yeah. we're trying to work with to program this. Um, the current system is awesome. Yeah, it is, it's good. simple, it's clean, it's, you know, maybe not everything fancy bell and whistle we want, but it actually functions and it looks awesome and basically using because we take a picture of every single product we've ever made yeah we have a huge library of like every single candle does, color does anybody do that i don't know i, mean, if, I don't think anybody don't does that I mean, like we individually impressive. serialize every product yeah and we take a photo multiple photos of yeah. every product so we have i think ryan narrowed the list down to like 120 color combinations yeah, just sense. for the handle color yeah which is wild and it was actually much more than that but we have literally a picture of every single one of those color combinations you want you know, blue with pink flakes, you want whatever. Yeah. Um, and we have a picture of that. So this buyer's choice system allows us to show those pictures and you can click on it, make it big and kind of build your dream knife and hit order Yeah. using physical pictures. Maybe not the exact combination that you want it to be, but you use your brain and, you know, imagination a little bit yeah. um, to be able to do that. And it's, re it's really cool. It's awesome. Awesome. So um, we're yeah. So that's, that's what it is. I mean, one of the big reasons for why we want to do it yeah is obviously we want the customer to get exactly what you want. I want to make sure that um, the customer, you know, they've always wanted a blue in this exact pattern, yeah. um, that they can actually get that. And it's, um, we absolutely want to provide that because especially for the Norseman, you know, the, the opportunity to get one is gonna start shrinking because like we've made, yeah. what? We've made this many Norsemen yeah. and, and we're only gonna make maybe this many left. Yeah. So, um, there's a finite amount of um, resources we have, so there's a finite amount of energy we can put into something. Exactly. Um, and there's, you know, there's, there's other, so many things we want to do. Yes. <laughs> so there's other, you know, products we have to focus our attention on, and, and new products, new ideas, new, you know, new developments for the future. Yeah. So I think it um, it gives people that opportunity to get what they want as that opportunity shrinks. Yeah. And um, I think it, this will give the Norseman an opportunity. It's been a, such a legendary knife. It's a iconic piece of, you know, knife history. It's, yeah, it's you know, been it's, so fun to have. Yeah. Like I love, love carrying yeah, my That's what Norseman. I carry all the time. It's right? generally what my, my knife. Um, it is so, I don't know, I just love yeah. it. So I think but we'll, this not, gives us opportunity to play exactly. also, so. No, nothing lives forever. Nope. And I think as, as we're doing this section, yep. not this, we've done this section. Now we're doing this section of yep. the knife. Um, Let's play. Let's play. Let's play. I think we have um, we'll, like we'll we'll get you guys what you want, but then what we want, we want to play. Yeah, it's a good because uh, we've dialed it in so much. It's so developed. It's such an iconic piece. It's really the grassroots of your brand. It's, Absolutely, it's built it's, our brand. Yeah, it's and it, your brand. It feels weird to like start to pull back from it, but yeah. we have to evolve. We have to grow. We have to do. Our attention has to go elsewhere, and yeah, um, yeah we're, you know it's still a strong product for us, but um, we need you know we need to keep ourselves happy and excited and uh, yeah. do new things. Yep. So that's exciting. And so that means- Because it's so developed, it's the perfect platform for us to play. Yeah, exactly. For us to like, okay, let's try. I, I don't want to reveal any, you know, any ideas, but we have a lot of ideas. And yeah. 
it's a stable platform that we can play on. Yeah. And, and just we have can a lot see of changes with. right away. It allows Sky and I to develop Petri processes. It allows you know you to play yeah. with lots of different things. Um, yep. Exciting. It's super cool. Yeah. So that's awesome. It's good. And I guess that means more damage steel. Yeah, more damage steel. Um, actually, got a bar right here of rose pattern damage steel. Super, super cool. Um, so I, I did have a big win on damage steel. To clamp this down the way that I want. In the past, we had soft jaws that kind of clamped it like this. I didn't love that so much. So making damage steel, Timascus, and also inlays, where we put um, green painters tape on the part, green painters yeah. tape on the fixture, super glue in the middle, activator on one side. Um, I would always have delamination and problems, and it would like really ruin my day. You know, you make, you try to make a hundred inlays, and you get like four because they just fly yeah. off. So I had a huge win where I started using thick CA glue, um, scuffing up the paint, yep. the, the tape with yep. um, 400 grit or, or more sandpaper, and no activator was was my big thing. So thick yep. glue, no activator, and scuffing. And I made a couple damn steel blades the other day, and. When I was chipping them off at the end, all the little pieces that are left over, they were like yeah. stuck. Like I was really, really, really happy with and impressed. And we um, don't send this stuff for water jet because I mean, we get our other stuff, but this is a small piece. It's harder for them to control. They could easily mess this up. And that's like exactly. thousands of dollars. Yeah, so and, just and gone. We've, we've had that. We've tried yeah. to have companies water jet. Also, when you like say you're, you're cutting blades and if you exit, but yeah. only exit on the top portion, the whole thing turns Curl into it. a banana. It starts yeah. to bow. So on the water jet table, it's Boeing and the operator making minimum wage doesn't notice. Yeah. And you'd end up having blades run out and it's a garbage, lot less so. control over where it is for us because um, we're handing it to somebody else of where yeah. these blanks are being cut out. So we um, are control freaks and exactly. we have to control a wire like would be nice, but I mean, that would take a long time and that's exactly. a huge expenditure. So then another way to prevent it from lifting and shifting and things. Yeah. So I developed and made these clamps, which turned out super cool. Yeah, they're made beautiful. Made from titanium on the Willowin. These are titanium? Yeah. Badass. I'm gonna get Gabe to anodize them blue. Nice. Um, They're like and, nice toolmaker and, clamps, and man. they have like a, a thumb screw from McMaster, and then a uh, jack screw, like reverse threaded on one side, and regular threaded, so you can extend it up and down, and then tighten it down. And then on this little lip, I drilled and pressed in a um, 116 ceramic very yep. wall to bite into the steel as it clamps, just to create like a little, a little pinpoint gripper. of pressure, yep. so that it can't slip out. Because I'm I'm less worried about it, but I'm worried about lifting, but also shifting. Because there's this, there's twelve planes of movement, and we yeah. gotta essentially constrain all of them. Exactly. Um, so this just lets it, it keeps the remnant like in place, and then when you're when you're programming your blades, you try to avoid the clamps. But um, I'll be using these for damage steel, Tamascus, awesome. and inlays. Like, yeah. and we needed this. this it just adds the level of confidence. It's yeah. like a can twist clamp, but miniature. And really nice it's super cool yeah. it's got our logo on the back it says uh december 2023 because date everything everything you make has to yeah. have a date on it i don't care who and these are. are totally custom for that solution um yeah and just yeah they work great. super cool so yeah a lot awesome. more damage still coming so speaking of which eric is going to join us my bro um and let's talk about damage steel. Let's yes. dig into let's dig in. damage steel more Wait, it's been a while since you've been on video it has been a while yeah yeah, yeah a little bit Oh, it's good to have you. Uh, yeah, it's good to be back. Welcome to the show. Yeah. So yeah, damage steel. Like we haven't done a lot in a long time because uh, this know. one's Norseman 200, which you etched 10 years ago. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, just with the whole process, it's always been like I like to get them really polished up, maybe a little bit too polished up. I think um, you set a really high standard. Yeah. You know, so that's, that's what we do. <laughs> it send, sends us down a rabbit hole every yeah. single time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I, I'm working on uh, trying to figure out a better way to polish quicker with less, you know, actual hands on time because yeah. I'm usually sitting there for like an hour with like a Dremel and a polishing brush or a, a disc. Um, but then, you know, you get some portion polished up and then you get a little scratch or inclusion or something and you have to go back and repolish and start yeah. over and do it again. So really trying to figure out how to minimize all of that and just get the results we want a bit faster. Yeah, yeah. So as we do more damage steel, uh, I think we should be able to figure that out. Especially handing this process off to someone like Gabe or Larry. Yeah. Um, that's like obviously a huge amount of training. Like you took, you know, it's years of development to get those skills. And now it's developing that process and the employees to be able to, yeah, yeah. to do this, yeah. which is extra work, but yeah, it's like, important. Like we're trying to move, you know, as we evolve the company, we're trying to be like, well, Eric always does that. We're yeah. trying to move away yeah. from that um, so that you're not just the, um, 
tribal knowledge. Like you're the only guy who knows how to do yeah. that kind of stuff. And then also, you know, write down the process, establish it, make it easy to train, smooth, predictable results. Like Larry always says, yeah. predictability is, yep. is yeah. the goal, right? And that's, you know, something I always struggled with with Damage Deal in the past right. was uh, consistency and predictability. Um, and like the acid, you know, it goes bad after a blade or two and it starts- Oh, do I have solutions for you? Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. excited. It starts making like the blade more yellow than you'd want it to be. Oh, yeah. Um, so with a bunch of John's ideas, it looks like we're going to have some really good ways to neutralize the acid safely, yeah. faster. Bro, you're going to have the cleanest acid yeah. you've ever seen. And yeah. this is uh, agitating it as well? Agitating it, yeah. filtering it. that was one it. of the questions there. in the comments was what will this benefit? Right. Um, not just the waste, but I guess you're agitating it so you can be always providing fresh solution to the well, Because it, it bubbles, right? Like, yeah. You tell me. Typically, um, you know, we usually just do it in a mason jar or something, and I have to sit there and stir the blade around okay. and move it. Because the bubbles form on the surface. Yeah, and if you don't get those bubbles away, it won't keep etching okay. under the bubbles. Mm -hmm. right, right. So you have to agitate it. Okay. But with the, the new stir thing, yeah. it'll just keep it flowing the whole time, and I can probably just put the blade in for 30 seconds, pull it out, put it back in. Yep. Awesome. Um, yeah, and like, in my head at least, this is all theory. Like all the equipment I bought, all the chemistry I've got, I, like theory should work. Yeah. Um, I've got all the solutions and then Eric and I will play and we'll develop a process yep. and we'll try We'll try a couple different acids, a couple different concentrations of things, mixing, temperature, things like that. Um, I want us to have the best process. I want to create the standard. Yep. That's what we do. Um, and then make our lives easy so that we can make hot fire all yes, the time. all the time. <laughs> right? Yeah, and we know you guys have been wanting a lot more damage steel for a long time, right. and now's the time to really ramp that up. And yeah. it is, yeah. if you've never owned a damage steel blade, it is so powerful, like, like especially now in the lighting, if I look bright, it's not as shiny. If I hold it up to this piece of paper and I look down and it reflects down, we'll get some overlay of this. It looks like you guys see Good this mirror. from this yeah. perspective, right? It looks so yeah. good. And it's such a high quality steel. It is, you know? and that's the thing with everything damage steel, RWL 34, it's, like we use it because it's fantastic. Yeah. It's clean. And the way they make their damage steel, like you're the one polishing it under microscope and yeah. you see all the all the secrets, right? Yeah. We, can you imagine if it was worse? Like, <laughs> Yeah, no, sucked. I couldn't. Like this is a very consistent yes. steel. And, and I think we've played with different uh, Damascus of different kinds and this is definitely one of the cleanest ones yeah, by yeah. far. Yeah. And I know um, other people have asked about you know, Damascus is a category, yes. it's, it's a type of steel. Damascus steel is a brand that makes a Damascus, yeah. right? Um, would we want to play with other brands of Damascus steel? To I know customers basically, some customers care less about performance and more about art and uniqueness yeah. and, you know, piece uniques and yeah, stuff like that. Sure. So like, would you be willing to make a carbon steel Damas Damascus blade made by whoever? I don't know. I mean, I'd prefer not to use a carbon steel, but if we, right. we might, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just, I'm the type of guy that will just forget to oil my blade, so it'll go rusty. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, we're a big fan of stainless blades. And this is a, like, that's a stainless Damascus that allows you to keep it wet, put it away, and you know, it's yeah. gonna look the same yeah. next time you take it out. Yeah, I mean, I wash it in the sink, and I yeah. just go like this yeah. and put it back in my pocket, and my pocket dries it, like your body heat. That's all I care about. Yeah. But, cool. So is there anything you'd like to see? Let's um, put through for you, for you to play with? Yeah, I mean, I want to play with more Gamma Steel, of course, but okay, so also... Like, I, ju I just looked through our stash. We have three bars of rose pattern Damascus, okay. Gamma Steel. Um, I thought we had some other stuff, but I think we've been burning it up slowly over time. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stay with you and we're going to order whatever you want, whatever next patterns of Gamma Steel you want. Yeah. Whether they have it in stock or they got a custom make it for us, they can do that. Um, so that, that'll be fun. Yeah, and then moving to the future, we have Blade Show in two months. Yep, two months. Like almost to the day, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, and first Blade Show in four years? Five, five years. Five. Yeah. 2019 was our last Blade Show. Yeah. Um, so we're going to bring some cool stuff to Blade Show. Yeah. I'll just, I'll leave that teaser hanging right there. Um, we're going to bring some unique stuff, some di different stuff, and we're going to play. Yep. And we have the next two months to make that stuff <laughs> yeah some is ongoing in the shop exactly some yeah. development uh but some secrets a little a little secret sauce yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i mean we're ex we're so excited for the future we're building this brand right and we're, we're trying to we're trying to plan not only the next you know six months like every business owner is always tunnel vision like what's next what's next what's next 
we're actually, you guys are forcing me to step back and to be like, what's that after that? What's years down the road? What's yeah. a lot of years down the road? Um, and we're making sure that we have fun, we enjoy ourselves, and we continue to build and crush and yeah. have a lot of fun. So we are very excited for what's to come, and you guys should get very excited too. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, on that note, well, yeah. that's about it. Yeah, it's good seeing you here. All right. Yeah, we're enjoying making these videos. Um, thank you guys for watching. All the feedback and comments yeah. is, is amazing. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, come see us at Blade Show for the first time. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Awesome. All right, guys. All right. All right, Thanks guys. so much. Adios. Bye.